Welcome to Fitton's Time Machine, a podcast designed not so much for present day listeners, but for future listeners. Here's today's blast from the past. Hello everybody, this is Robert Fitton. I'm speaking to you from the year 2015, month of August, nearing the Labor Day weekend. Today we're going back to the year 1963, September of that year, and Labor Day weekend. The setting is just outside Galveston, Texas, along the ocean in a city called Bay Cliff. Your name is Lee Oswald, and with you in a car, traveling south, is a Latin man named Hernandez. The question to everyone in the future is why Oswald, a loner, a drifter, a man who could not hold a job, is heading down to the coast. Oswald and Hernandez pull up to the house of Robert McEwen. Okay, so what? Oswald could still be that drifter somehow heading down to the Texas shore along the Gulf. But first of all, let's take a look at Robert McEwen. I think the headline should probably be Robert McEwen on probation for gun running. Second headline, personal friends with Fidel Castro in the early 1960s and the late 1950s. And why was Robert McEwen friends with Fidel Castro? Answer is, he supplied arms to Fidel during the revolution. Another little tidbit about McEwen is he had a visitor in the 1950s, several years prior to the visit by Oswald. Jack Rubenstein, a.k.a. Jack Ruby. Yes, folks, Jack Ruby of the Carousel Club and later the murderer of Lee Oswald made an appearance at Robert McEwen's house in the late 50s. So my question is, what the hell did Ruby want with McEwen? Number one, he wanted to get some of his mafia friends out of jail in Cuba, and he was willing to pay McEwen 5000 apiece to get them out. And he wanted to make a deal to sell jeeps and guns and other assorted armaments to Fidel. That's the setting here as Oswald and Hernandez pull up to the house. Staying with McEwen is his friend Sam Neal, and his wife, God knows why she's running around in a negligee, but she was, is also there. But before we get into the conversation of just what Lee Oswald wanted, or what he said to McEwen, let's remember that McEwen testified under oath to the FBI and to the House Committee on Assassinations. And he also said, and this is important, he was watching his TV after John Kennedy was killed, and when Oswald's face came over the TV, he made the following comment. That's the dirty little bastard who was at my house. Now, I recreate that scene in my book, and I will play that at the end of this podcast. There was a CBS News inquiry in 1975. McEwen talks about Oswald wanting some bazookas and machine guns. And then this is, this is the critical part. Quote, he said he wanted four powerful, maybe 300 savage automatics with a telescopic sight on them. Oswald told McEwen he would pay $1,000, and that's 1963 dollars, for each rifle. This is the guy who has no money and is trying to survive paycheck to paycheck or unemployment check to unemployment check. And McEwen reiterated that he did not want to get involved. He also said his friend Sam Neill witnessed this encounter. There's also an interview by Gaten Fonzie, the respected and legendary interviewer and investigator for the HSCA. This occurred on August 27, 1976. This is what transpired at that time. After introducing themselves, McEwen said that Oswald wanted McEwen to furnish arms for a revolution in San Salvador. McEwen refused to cooperate, and then the men departed, Oswald and Hernandez. But they returned in a few minutes. At this time, Oswald asked McEwen to provide four high-powered automatic rifles, again, with a telescopic lens, and he specifically mentioned the 300 Savage automatics. And Oswald said he was willing to pay up to $10,000. McEwen stated that this man, Lee Harvey Oswald, was the man who allegedly shot President Kennedy. McEwen also said that Sam Neill called him immediately after Oswald was murdered, and he said that he recognized Oswald as the man who had visited the house. Here's the point. It should be pretty clear that Lee Oswald arrived with Hernandez and tried to buy arms from Robert McEwen. 
He had access to substantial amounts of money and was willing to pay for armaments. And the important part of this little ditty is that Oswald wanted high-powered rifles, the Savage Automatics. Now let's be real. If you were going to kill the President of the United States, why would you go down and have people witness you proposing a transaction for high-powered rifles? And let's remember, too, that Oswald was there long enough for McCune and Neal to recognize him on November 22, 1963. The point is that you wouldn't do this, even if you were a complete idiot, you wouldn't do it. The larger question is, who sent Oswald over there to ask McEwen for the rifles? Something to ponder every time you hear that President Kennedy was assassinated by a lone nut. I'm going to end today's Blast from the Past with the audio from my book, 1963, which describes this little meeting with Oswald, Hernandez, McEwen, Sam Neill, and the tiptoeing wife in her negligee. Don't get into that too much here, but we will listen to that right now. He pulled her back inside. I almost wish we didn't have to drive up to Dallas. She checked her watch. We need to go wait for Roswell. I wonder what they have him doing this morning. Patch turned the Impala into a residential coastal community and parked under a clump of trees up the street from McEwen's spacious home. It waited for nearly half an hour before a white Ford cruised smoothly by them and stopped along the road near the house. He placed the headphones over his ears and turned on the tape recorder. Sherry readied the camera. A distinguished Latin-looking man in a blue suit and Lee Oswald in a short sleeve shirt walked up the drive toward the house. Two men holding coffee cups peered out the picture window. A woman in a negligee passed behind them. Oswald knocked on the front door. Patch aimed the amplifier. Sherry snapped several long-range photos. A dark-haired man opened the front door. My name is Lee Oswald. I've finally found you. You're McEwen, are you not? Yes. Patch twisted the audio gain higher. The tape recorder reel spun around as Oswald spoke. Well, I've looked for you for quite a while, but I'm not sure that you're McEwen. I understand you can supply any amount of arms. Who told you that? Guns? asked Patch. He's asking about guns. I'm pretty sure that you can do it, said Oswald. We're thinking about having a revolution in El Salvador. El Salvador? Yes, it's such a small country it would be easy to do. The man's voice became strained. I want to tell you right now, I'm on probation. And I said I'm not about to get mixed up in no damn arms of any kind. Not anymore. I'm in enough trouble as it is. I won't give you nothing. Patch adjusted the amp as Oswald kept babbling. You can make all this money, Mr. McEwen. I said I'm not interested in money. I'm married now. I'm working. I'm trying to do right. And I don't want to get mixed up in anything like that. So that's that. Have a good day. But, Mr. McEwen, my wife doesn't know anything of this. She doesn't know that I was mixed up in all this mess, so goodbye. This is Mr. Hernandez. Glad to know you. I've heard a lot about you. That's all in the past. Goodbye. Oswald and Hernandez headed back to the car, but Patch could still hear McEwen and his friend as he closed the door. Sam, ain't this one hell of a mess. Mac, don't mess with him. I ain't gonna mess with him. Sherry hit his arm and Patch looked up. Patch, Oswald's going back to the house. Patch kept the tape running as Oswald knocked again. McEwen stepped outside this time. Mac, would you do me a favor? And it won't involve you in any way. I can give you $10,000 if you can get me four rifles. I have the money right here in my pocket. Look, pal, I said no. I would prefer the 300 Savage Automatics with a telescopic sight. Patch turned to her. He wants automatic rifles? McEwen thought for a second. What do you want with four rifles? can't do nothing with a revolution with four rifles. If you get them for me, I would surely appreciate it. I will give you 10000 if you can get those four rifles. Again, McEwen paused and looked skyward before he spoke again. No way! Like I just told you, I'm not getting involved in no kinds of arms. Hell, if you want rifles, you can go down to Sears and Robux and buy them. You can get rifles at any hardware store. Why do you have to come to me to get them? Oswald looked him in the eye. You are being very uncooperative and rude. There's no
no reason for you and me to be talking anymore. I'm not going to fool with any arms whatsoever. None whatsoever. Oswald and Hernandez returned to the car. Pat shut off the recorder, then he and Sherry looked at each other. McEwen wants nothing to do with getting rifles for Oswald. He says he can buy them at Sears. I agree with McEwen, said Sherry. He can buy those guns anywhere. Oswald said he was in a revolution in El Salvador. But that El Salvador story was incredible, sweetness. Patch waited as Oswald and Hernandez left in the Ford. Why ask for those rifles? He's being told to do all these things, Patch. Something isn't right here. Audio recording, three and a half inch reel, August 31st, 1963. This is Lemon. Oswald incredibly offered at Mr. Robert McEwen in a Bayside, Texas, $10,000 for four automatic rifles. I do not know where Oswald would get $10,000, nor would he say why he was working in a revolution in El Salvador. It should be noted that although I suspect McEwen had done this type of work in the past, he was emphatic in telling Oswald he wanted nothing to do with selling guns. Lemon out. Although it never panned out, what better way to frame somebody than to set them up by having them request high-powered automatic rifles with telescopic sights? And again, it did not pan out this way because McEwen didn't bite. McEwen did not want to violate his probation and I think deemed Oswald and Hernandez suspicious. This is Robert Fitton, August 24th, 2015. I've been zooming back into the past.